Hi guys, um, Matt's for Geeks here, Matt's for Geeks, Sid over here, and, and I am going to be talking to you today about the IGCSE curriculum. And the IGCSE curriculum, obviously I'm not an expert in all the subjects, and I'm definitely not going to be teaching all of it. As the name states of the website, it's Matt's for Geeks, and I will be covering the two maths topics in the IGCSE program. First of all, we have IGCSE Mathematics, that is the basic part of higher level maths. And the second part is IGCSE Additional Mathematics, and this is for those who want to become engineers and um, all these maths related professions in the world. That's, that's for additional mathematics where you learn trigonometry, calculus, at a really advanced mathematics that you might learn in university. And that those are for people who are taking some mathematical courses in university. But if you're not, then you then it's compulsory. Your schools make it compulsory for you to take maths because you really have to do that. It's a necessity. But add maths is a optional choice when you decide your subjects. Depends on the banding and all that. But that's not important right right now. Um, at the moment, I am going to be discussing with you. The, the syllabus for these subjects. Okay, first of all, we're going to start with mathematics. And the grades you can get for mathematics, which I expect will be A star to C. And uh, after C, there's something called a D, E, an F, and a G. Um, a star means excellent, fantastic, 95% and above. You have mastered. It's so well that they have just got to give you an A star. That's 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 the quality of an A star. Uh, how prestiged it is. If not, you get a A, a normal A, which is also very good. A B, okay, or a C, which is close to failing, but you still pass. And then you have a D, and an E, and an F. These three highly unlikely, unless you're really really bad at the subject, then it's a D or an E. Or an F, and last of all, the most disgraceful one is a G. A G means you cannot be graded. You have done so badly in that exam that they just have to fail you. That uh, that means if the examiner cannot understand your handwriting or the paper, all the answers are completely wrong. That he does not feel like he needs to mark it at all, or anything like that. That will be what we call. A G. You just put a G. I'm not marking this paper. Done. You fail. But let's not go negative. So the IGCSE mathematics is assessed via two components. All candidates have to take two written papers. Candidates who follow the core curriculum. Core curriculum is um, the most basic part. It's when your teacher thinks you're gonna fail the exam or you have done really badly throughout the course that um, the, the school knows that you can't get a C and above, they give you a core paper. A core paper is extremely easy and all the, all the topics in the core paper are very very simple, very simplified questions. And the maximum you can get in a core paper is a C, you cannot get over a C. It's impossible to get a B or an A. The maximum you can get is a C. And no one ever fails a core paper because those are for the students who cannot go to the extended, the proper, the standard paper. Okay, the core curriculum, the basic part, has paper 1 and paper 3. Paper 1 is short answer questions based on the core curriculum. 56 marks. 56 marks, externally marked, marked in the UK obviously. It's a one hour paper and is worth 35% of your grade. And we have a paper three for core. Structured questions based on the core curriculum, 104 marks this time. These are structured questions and the paper one is short answered questions. And this is also externally marked, two hour paper and is worth 65% of your mark. Now for most of you who will be taking the extended paper, I believe, and you must take the extended paper because that's that's the that's the real point of taking IGCSEs. Um, there are two extended papers, obviously. There's paper two and there is paper four. Paper two is short answer questions based on the extended curriculum, the harder topics. 
It's worth 70 marks and is externally marked in the UK by professional examiners. It is 1 hour and 30 minutes long and it is worth 35% of your final grade, which is 100%. No, the final grade is supposed to be 100%, but they mark it out of 200. And paper 4 extended, for extended papers, is structured questions based on the extended curriculum. 130 marks externally marked and is worth 65% of your final grade. And in the paper, you should have an electronic calculator for all papers. Algebraic or graphical calculators are not permitted. You're not allowed to use all these fancy, fancy calculators. The most basic one that you're allowed to use will be a basic scientific calculator, which you will have to use in the exam. Um, for the example, uh, this is a type of scientific calculator. Um, this is a Casio FX 570ES Plus. It's a basic advanced calculator that is mostly recommended for the Cambridge exams. As all the features over here, we have log, we have calc, the x to the power of 2, x to the power of 3, um, alpha, shift, and the basic number buttons, delete, and AC, which is shift off. Logarithms, the basic stuff is all covered. Trigonometry, logarithms, basic equations, matrices, all of this is basically covered inside this basic calculator, which is uh, allowed in the Cambridge exams. But you are not allowed to use all these fancy, fancy calculators that have very, very advanced um, parts that can actually solve complete questions for you. Not allowed. Three, okay, all, all the uh, questions that do not say, let's say you have a very long working question and you are supposed to answer answer it and it's a very long number so 0 0.5698 you are supposed to give the answer to three significant figures I'll teach you three significant figure significant fi figures later um, it's three significant figures in the answer don't copy down everything you'll get it wrong um, candidates should use the value of pi from their calculators if their calculator provides this Otherwise, they should use the value 3.142 given on the front page of the question paper only. Tracing paper may be used in the exam for transformational questions. And the two things that are going to be tested in the IGCSE mathematics, the two assessment objectives is assessment objective one, mathematical techniques. You will be learning all the mathematical techniques that you have learned throughout the course in the paper. So this includes like um, basic numbers, algebra, calculus, trigonometry, sets, matrices. All these are basic techniques, the way you do stuff. And assessment objective two, which has always been emphasized by the Cambridge curriculum as one of the most important parts of the paper is obviously applying mathematical techniques to solve problems you can't only know the techniques you must know how to apply them which is extremely important and that will be covered in the paper as well assessment objective one and assessment objective two and um in mathematical techniques you organize interpret and present information accurately in written tabular graphical diagrammatic forms you have to be able to perform calculations by suitable methods you must know how to use an electronic calculator. Um, you must understand systems of measurement in everyday use. You must be able to estimate, approximate, and work to degrees of accuracy appropriate to the context. You must be able to use mathematical instruments like the compass, the compass, the protractors, um, rulers, obviously. You must know how to measure using one of this. Um, you must be able to interpret, transform, and make appropriate use of mathematical statements. So you're going to be asked to explain why some things happen. Let's say they say 2 over 5 is equal to 6 over 12. Um, is this true or not? Explain your answer. Then you have to explain, no, it cannot be. Because if I divide 12 by 5, it's not divisible. And so these two are not equal. I can give an example. They give you two lines and it's basically one mark. You must be able to do this 
make proper mathematical statements and you must be able to do space diagrams and you must be able to apply everything you've used in real life so all the in paper 2 in the extended curriculum you will be asked basically all the mathematical techniques they're not going to be much thinking in that paper and that the paper 4 with structured questions are basically all word problems they'll be asking you all kinds of word problems regarding the techniques you have learnt and you have to make logical deductions logical deductions, logical predictions, logical calculations from the given mathematical data and you must be you must be applying all the skills you've learnt throughout the IGCSE curriculum for you to um, get past that paper and get an A star and the breakdown, the breakdown of the marks is basically assessment objective A01 for the extended assessment mathematical techniques in paper 2 28 to 35 marks will be based on mathematical techniques and paper 4 52 to 65 marks will be based on um, mathematical techniques for applying mathematical techniques to to solve problems 35 to 42 percent 35 to 42 marks of the paper will be on this and in the paper 4 65 to 78 marks are in applying mathematical techniques so in the extended assessment A01 will be 40 to 50 percent and assessment objective 2 will be 50 to 60 percent and the grade descriptions I'm not gonna give this all to you because it's mostly unnecessary and a waste of time but you can read all of this in the syllabus aims of the Cambridge um, curriculum which will be available on your website at all times for free so you can have a look at the grape descriptors mm. and the topics now the nine topics that you will be covering in the mathematics curriculum will be number basic numbers These they'll teach you basic fractional fractions decimals um, basic stuff complete something you've already learnt from year 7 to year 9 but they'll just recap all of it in the first chapter which is number and then we have algebra and graphs algebra is basically algebraic expressions the questions based on it um, and then you have graphs you have to draw graphs, linear, linear equations, quadratic graph, circular graphs, all of this and then you have geometry geometry measures angles, um, obtuse angles um, acute angles, reflex angles, all of this and you have to use mensuration, measuring, coordinate ge geometry, the higher level of geometry, and basic trigonometry. And remember, in trigonometry over here, it's extremely basic. The hard part of trigonometry will be in the curriculum for the IGCC additional mathematics. Then you have matrices and transformations, where you transform uh, diagrams, use matrices to do um, transformations. Then you have probability, which is very fun, and statistics. You have to pr predict data from statistics, so they can maybe show you the um, a graph of the number, the population of Africa after the Zika virus broke out or the Ebola broke out, and they're gonna ask you to explain the trend, and they're gonna make you do some range of calculations. So calculate the range for this graph, or give me the mean, give me the mode and they might ask you to explain some stuff using the graph that's given and you must be able to make logical predictions and, and give logical answers depending on all of it so you can use a lot of stuff besides, besides the book the book that many people use will be um, the Cambridge Additional Mathematics Guide uh, core and extended course book it's the revised edition by the Cambridge University Press and is also approved by the CUP and this is what they use in most international schools around Malaysia and not only that we don't only need this book for our purposes we can also use in addition to the book that your teachers use in class you can do so much more learning you can use external websites like Maths for Geeks 
mathsgeeks.org um, there are so many other online courses that you can take for maths there's, there's us we do we do um, the IGCC program and the eat the book comes with a CD with additional materials um, that you can practice and uh, they have PowerPoints they have practice papers and all that and right before the exam to practice the style of questions you can log on to look on the screen extremepapers.com <coughs> to download a list of past year papers um, for IGCC mathematics and every other IGCC course on this website they will have every single one and all the papers core and extended with the mark schemes so you can have a look at it have a look at it answer the questions and then check your answers using the mark scheme if you have any external doubts or you would like some personal coaching on some topics that you don't understand please do not hesitate to email me at founder at mathsforgeeks.org I will always be there to help you we can have a session a, a personal coaching session online or I can prepare some kind of material for you or suggest something or in one of my videos before I start I can answer some question that you do not understand and we can have a look we can go to on a slow basis thank you guys thank you for watching this video I know it is pretty long it's already 16 minutes and I'm still talking I'm sorry um, but this is just very important so I wish you guys all the best for the IGCSE mathematics course and I will be looking forward to teaching you all the topics additional additionally obviously to what you learn in school you learn it in school then you can refer to my website to see what you don't understand what's the qualified adults you have if it can't be covered in school um, I hope you get an A star for whatever you do and I wish you your I wish you the best in all the subjects that you're going to be taking in the IGCC course and in the future um, we will be starting very soon for the nine topics in IGCC mathematics and I will be answering questions and doing practice questions on the board over here um, about everything we've been running practice questions just like I will be just randomly picking a question from a past year paper, last year's paper and I will be doing it on the board and we will see whether you guys can answer it and uh, on a further note we might have another live stream very soon for the IGCC program specifically maybe in December during the Christmas holidays we will have um, a long live stream about some topics where I can answer your doubts but this time let's focus on IGCC let's go harder let's go higher into the program and guys thank you for watching please stay tuned to my website mathsforgeeks.org and my youtube channel www.youtube.com slash c slash mathsforgeeks and my facebook page facebook.com slash mathsforgeeks um thank you guys for watching stay tuned